Second shot. Hello, <laughs> and welcome to the slightly grandiosely titled uh, talk, Migrating Your Way to Drupal 8 Greatness. This is um, beginner targeted, um, so I'm curious uh, who in the room has made a Drupal 8 module? The Hello World Tom? Yes. As far as migration is concerned, it absolutely counts. So. <laughs> um, there is expectation that if you're doing much with migration, you're, you are going to get into code. Um, but it, possibly if you're going from Drupal 6 or 7, you won't need any code at all. So we'll get there. Um, so if anyone wants to just take notes and follow along on that etherpad, just create it and anyone else who goes there will also get there. Um, my name is Ben Melanson and I work for Agaric um, and also own the company. It's a worker-owned cooperative of uh, five of us, um, including Mauricio who's been presenting at this camp and generally doing all these things better than I am. Um, yeah. This presentation is brought to you by Chad Fennell, who put me up in his house the first time I came to the last camp. Otherwise, I probably would have died of exposure or something in Minneapolis. Um, all the flaws in the talk are entirely my fault. So, migrating your way to Drupal 8 greatness. Um, I don't think the ethernet's working. No? All right. It's redirecting something that doesn't exist. Or for bold.etherpad-mozilla.org uh, so maybe the, 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 yeah. yeah, so you put that URL in and redirects it yeah, alright, sorry, Mozilla must have changed some stuff on me since I modeled it um, yeah, if you do the same thing at whatever Mozilla, unless they quit the etherpad entirely, which would be pretty rude alright, sorry um, and it wants to do the same thing on rise up, pad .rise up net or whatever it's a whole bunch options out there. Um, so the first question you have to ask yourself is, is why migrate off of another site, off of um, you know, uh, an older version of Drupal or um, a, another uh, CMS like Joomla? And the answer given in the talk yesterday was, no one likes Joomla. <laughs> and uh, if I, I, searched, I searched for sad Joomla and found Joomla templates premium sad PowerPoint. And that's the rather small image there. Um, actually, just to be fair, some people do like Joomla. Joomla Day is, I think, coming up for another year in, in Minnesota. Um, but. What you're looking at is, you know, your site may not have been all that it used to be. Um, maybe, yeah, it got hacked because it's old and secure software. Maybe, you know, the living room module is no longer supported and it's sort of taken everything down around with it. Um, or maybe you just want to get your data into new digs. Uh, so, what you start with is you do not start with your old house. Your, I'm sorry, your old uh, site. <laughs> you start uh, brand new, you start building your Drupal 8 site. And that's really important um, conceptually because I think a lot of people start focusing on what they have and you want to start with your, you, you want to start with where you want to go. And then you go back and look at getting your, your data into your new set. You'll have plenty of time to uh, to make it, uh, um, modifications to your new site to accommodate your old data, but uh, you uh, don't want to um, you don't want to be looking at your old site as the model for your new site. You want to be looking at where you really want to go. Um, because otherwise you will just be piling in your uh, content uh, into something without structure. That is absolutely not what you want to do. Right. So you have some sense of where you are trying to go. Um, so the you know, very quick rule of thumb, you know, you're, you're trying to, you know, so you have some sense of how you can build a Drupal 8 site but if you're just looking for a really simple estimate of how uh, 
how much effort is going to go in getting your old content over, you're still looking at your, your new site. Um, so for each content type or other entity like user that you are expecting to get information in and the idea in the using complexity points uh, idea um, uh, from you know agile and such you can sort of think of each entity um, as just one complexity point it's pretty simple you know that's just a grouping of what you're really migrating which is data into different fields and um, generally we just look at your your target fields um, and you know coming up with uh, each complexity point taking about two hours which is sort of the speed that um, has been working for us for migration and non-migration things it actually adds up you know pretty fast these look at look like small numbers but if you're moving five content types with an average of eight fields um, for each type that is a uh, hundred and two complexity points or you know roughly translated hours over 200 hours and you know that's a month of one person's work or you know at web development shop um, over thirty thousand um, dollars so the price of migration can get up there really fast but you'll note that nowhere in this formula is how much content you have it's not it's not how many pieces of content it's how many types of content so if you you know, the uh, migration gets to be a much, much better, you know, financial deal the more, um, the more content you have per type. So if you're just moving, you know, 10,000 blog posts, you know, that's fantastic. It might be two or three fields and, you know, that's not going to take any longer to move 10,000 pieces than it would if there were 10. So you, you sort of look at this and say, okay, which ones, you know, you probably don't end up migrating maybe pages from your other site if most of your content is in some other structure because those are something that you can you know, map. Um, you can manually move over and check on things. So if it's less than you know, 20 or even more posts, it's almost always worth, it's more effort to do the migration um, than it is to just uh, do it. Uh, but that's if you have to do it, um, you, know, you have to go into the code and configuration to do it. Um, you can definitely try what we'll look at um, in a bit, which is just uh, just using the, the built-in uh, capability to migrate from older versions of Drupal if that's what you're doing. Um, so again, you're not going to migrate uh, in the schema that you had um, in whatever version you had, Drupal 6, Drupal 7, or Joomla. Um, you're going to build it exactly as you want, Drupal 8, and then go on. Uh, Les Lynn was saying that in the boff uh, before this. Um, so if we're going back to the house analogy, you want to have constructed your house and have empty rooms to um, bring your content into. Um, so things to look out for. Um, in your existing data set. Uh, one of you know, the uh, Minneapolis uh, uh, badge here is uh, kind enough to demonstrate one of the common problems of old content, which is character encoding. Uh, that is not quite how you spell my name. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure how to pronounce that, but if anyone can help me out. Um, I, I do appreciate it. It's sort of like an extra homage to Prince, uh, being slightly symbolified. Um, but yeah, um, so <laughs> you, um, um, anyhow, this is what the migrate module like makes really great is like you can see these problems, um, you know, there, and you can make some. That's when you add um, a processor, possibly to fix things. Um, you know, I've I've had when migrating from a million old sources, I've I've had just like you know find a place on the content um, you know, without, without any ability to properly you know, read what it was encoded like it to begin with. If I could figure out what the characters are supposed to be, you can just add a find a place on your processor and fix that, and you can rerun migrations as much as you like. Um, all right. The migrate module is using a more general process called extract, transform, or load, and load. And 
the um, and so you can read lots of theory and and learn more deeply about this. Um, and so just so it maps up to what you'd be doing in Drupal, um, the uh, extract is maps up to what is called source in Drupal migrations. Transform is called process, and the load is is the destination in Drupal. Um, and that's um, from the migration API page. Um, and these will be linked in like the these slides are HTML and everything. That's yellow is a link, and I'll uh, I'll add this there. Um, so yeah. Um, and uh, Ralph Kimball is a uh, person who's written all about the ETL, and yeah. But so we're not going to be covering the theory here. We're going to just go to uh, what is practical. Um, and uh, so, what you need to install, if you're really, really lucky, nothing. It will all be in core. And so we're going to switch over, I hope, to just take a look at um, what that looks like. Available uh, modules, migrate, migrate Drupal, migrate Drupal UI, they're all listed under experimental modules in core, but you know, even if you're not using the UI, that's what you're relying on. So that's where we are right now. Um, and if you're yeah, again, if you're lucky, you just uh, oh yeah, sorry. Um, enable the experimental modules, don't be afraid of that, um, and then can proceed to um, this is again only for Drupal 6 and Drupal 7 um, but it will try to help you out it will look at your database and, and the old database and be able to provide the structure um, so that's if you're really lucky um, that's what you do and so you just have to get you know just put in the information for your, for your old database which you can put next to your site um, so if that works for you you're done. Um, again, like you can just choose not to migrate. You know, small pieces. Of, you know, p things, pieces of content that don't have a place on your site that you're gonna do something else with. Um, but if you need to do more, then you're going to get into the code. Um, oh, sorry. Enabling the experimental modules. Okay, but if you, um, yeah, so getting into the code um, using Composer on a Drupal 8 site, um, these are the modules you will probably want. Um, migrate upgrade is actually not doing anything right now except providing Drush commands to uh, supplement um, the six to seven migration that there that there's a UI for in core. Um, so that, that module will probably um, go away pretty soon. Um, and right now, a lot of the, the, the most important module and the main thing to take away from this whole talk is the Migrate Plus module is um, where all the examples for writing migrations are currently living. Um, and it's adding, it's sort of where things are moving a little bit faster um, than core. Um, all, um, all written by the same migration team, um, but and things are getting into core quite regularly. Um, it's migrate continues to change and evolve in core, um, but migrate plus is where you'll find the examples right now, um, and that's crucial. And that's where we're going to go next. Um, so, to just you know, the, the most basic. Um, uh, 
you know, uh, things you need to start writing your own migration is uh, your, you know, this is this is an info file in Drupal 8, their info.yaml, um, but you just declare your dependencies and um, include it. So if you're making your own custom module for um, the migration to be able to pull in uh, different data, that is uh, where you start. And I think. We'll jump over to code now. So most of the action now is uh, for a basic migration is entirely in the configuration. So it's it's almost uh, it's almost entirely in configuration now, and we'll show the the part that's not. Um, so the most interesting thing is oh, okay, um, and again this is this I mean this is literally the um, migrate example um, module which is kept the most up to date with how um, with how migrate continues to evolve. The um, the uh, destination is just entity node, and then in the process is where you define um, the 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 content type. So that's just the machine name of the content type, and then in the um, and then the source defines is what, so that Drupal can handle that pretty well, it's just all mappings of the, um, of what it was in the source, and so in Drupal, Drupal would be UID and UID, so you don't even have to um, uh, you know, say that if it's the same. Um, you can set the default values for everything, so if there's no concept of sticky where you're coming from, you can you know, tell it to not make it sticky, um, and all of that. And so that's, um, that's handling where it's going um, pretty easily. And in the, um, in this, the source is where you then deal with um, where you're coming from. Nice. 
move that up there, even though I can't see it. So this is in your module source plugin. Ah, it's not going to work. And then, yeah, our lovely um, continually nested. Um, once you're in source, the same things all over again. Plug and migrate source. Uh, this is the one we're looking at. <coughs> and so this is in, um, for pulling in directly from SQL. And this is where you do the work of, you know, telling it where to find your data in the source. Um, and so as long as, and there, there's uh, plugins for JSON um, and XML, and um, if people are interested, I can show you um, what we've done to create, um, when we want to import from flat files, we usually uh, pre-process that with some Python scripts to move the flat fi files into XML. Um, it'd be also be possible to um, write plugins that bring, bring it in directly, but um, Python um, and the beautiful soup library for cleaning up HTML gives us a lot of options for, for pre-processing it. So if you're dealing with flat HTML, I recommend um, you know, doing the pre-processing and something, you know, Python beautiful soup is fantastic. And then, um, and then you can just use uh, Drupal's XML plugin for um, bringing in the uh, bring in the, 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 the XML. Um, so there's XML and JSON um, plugins um, are already supported um, in, in Drupal 8. And the, as, as additional modules and in, in core, it supports pulling in from SQL, which is what's being shown here. is all of this is entirely on the source side and it's just returning one row at a time to be handled by the process which is uh, doing the mapping. This is simply um, you know, defining everything in, in the source. Is the countries an entity reference? It's got multiple values of, or is it just a, a standard field? Um, so that I'll show that in a second. What you handle with, what, what you do when you um, when you're referencing another entity, and that's what um, you know, migrate is is does really well. Is it keep, it it keeps track of the mapping of your your source data IDs to your um, result, you know your destination. your destination IDs and. Um, and, and keep track of that mapping for you. You never actually have to look at it, um, but it will keep track of that for you. Oh. So in this case, it's just doing it as multi-value field. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, you know, it's not a separate entity, so it doesn't need to keep track of that. Um, but To map to the to keep track of the same users, it does have to do that. So let's go back. Yeah. So at the bottom, migration dependencies is keep is making sure that um, terms and users are brought in first. And so it's just.
And so this is the source, but actually we should start with, um, with the configuration, which gives it the name and tells it to look for this source. Okay, it gets to live all in configuration, which you can just put in your install file in your custom module, and it will be brought up when you install. Um, and you can, you know, while developing, reinstall or just, you know, uh, just bring in the configuration. The configuration doesn't have to live in the module; it can live in your general configuration. So you can um, edit it there and uh, drush minus y cim to import your configuration. It's just giving it the ID, and then it's giving it the, the source plugin, and that's um, what we're looking at over here um, in the source folder and all of the you know, source plugin migrate source, and there it is. And it, you know, again, destination really simple because Drupal 8 already knows all about that. Um, it's a taxonomy term. And then the mapping. So I mean, sometimes the hardest thing is figuring out what your mappings are. Um, the entity for blocks is um, is uh, I'm forgetting. I think it's content underscore block. Um, and the entity, um, yeah. So you look up what entity you're going to, um, which. Um, it's to be the same as in the uh, the default content module DCER, um, which is some increasingly better documentation for the types of con um, entities Drupal has. Um, and the processing is where we say how to get from one spot to the other. <coughs> Simple mapping. So for more complex processing, um, you can also do um, process plugins. And you start out with um, you know, um, defining what you're going to use at the, um, 
top of your module file. So, um, you know, in the, you know, this is another source thing, this time in the, the plugin, um, in a plugin folder, and migrate process. And this is coming from um, Nerdlog's um, uh, site. Um, so we're going to be using process plugin base, um, the migrate executable influence interface, and and the row. And bam. So we'll just go directly to the source. And this is just translating um, old values to new ones. Um, if it's not something that you know, you don't want to bring in three into, you know, the number three into a new Drupal site um, that can't map to anything. Um, even if you're switching, you know, even if it were still using numeric IDs for roles, you'd probably need to explain to it how to transform itself. Um, and this is what that's doing, it's translating the you old know, role three maps to the new administrator role um, and the old role four con trans, yeah. Uh, translates the content administrator. And this is just acting, it acts on each row of, of the um, migration, and that would be called, as in the example module, Apologies for not being prepared enough. This is not acceptable, I'm sorry. Um, but I would like to um, look at anyone um, looking to do a migration and take questions and um, to try to, um, yeah, to, to look at a very practical um, migration and, um, and work on it. Um, um, yeah. I'm not looking right now to do a migration, but it's like a, what I want to know about how to approach uh, is th there's the nodes and you know all the fields and then the, the reference to nodes, uh, but also there's the views and then uh, the panels, okay. uh, the fields in the, in the panelizer, and how do you approach all that, or does it have to be, or does that have to be redone? That, I mean, that definitely has to be redone, and the, yeah. So this is, all right, so just on the, the whole panelizer thing, there, there's a new way, there's a new set of, the new way of doing it in Drupal 8 um, with, you know, page management panelizer, and it's, it should be better in the future, like going from Drupal 8 to Drupal 9, because it's, uh, it's cleaner. Yeah. So, um, but it's still essentially the mapping of where things are located, that's still the messy part. Yeah. Um, and that's sort of condensed into one messy spot. So you can very easily get the, the data over, um, but it, especially in the new version, but then mapping to where it should go is still, you know. So you're better off just taking, uh, you know, removing well, those t content types in the new panel. I mean, that's going to be a much more complex um, migration if you, if you want to tell it where it should go for each thing, but yeah. it, it definitely would be possible. 
um, that's going to be stored somewhere in the database also. You just have to look at how it is. Right. But there is no, um, that I know of, no plans of supporting an upgrade path. Views um, is more, because there's more of those. <laughs> views is, is configuration, is entirely configuration. There shouldn't be any, you know, weird mangling of content and configuration in, in views. Yeah. So, um, so migrating configuration, that has not been, I've, yeah, that's not covered at all in what migrate module does. It's strictly for content. You, uh -huh. you find it. Um, under the content menu um, and everything. So, um, and there's no, and yeah, and that's what's been dropped. Like in, from Drupal 6 to Drupal 7, there was a concept of keeping, um, of upgrading configuration as well as content. Here it's like the, as I outlined, like you're expected to completely <coughs> configure your new site and then bring the things in. So okay, if so you have, views would be so you would have to recreate yeah the views yeah um, someone do correct me if I'm wrong but I don't think anyone is trying to support um, configuration of views going from seven to eight um, so if you have a lot of complex views that would be a little bit annoying painful possibly. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, the, going from one major version of Drupal to another is essentially building a new site. And, and that's sort of always been the case. Like, if, yeah. you, if you, things are probably broken down, so Drupal is being a bit more honest now and saying, you're building a new site and migrating the content in. The good news is Drupal 8 should have, like, a decade-long lifespan because we're going to keep adding improvements to it. Um, so... It, you know, Drupal 8 should be the longest lived version of Drupal yet um, because it can keep getting improvements and there, you know, upgrades to the configuration will be supported. Um, okay. But yeah, for getting to Drupal 8, it's going to be... Um, still, so the pain point will be, the, I mean, the panels actually is not that big of a deal. It's that's, not that know, much that, content? Well, it's just that you can, I mean, that's a by content type and then we have a few going world pages. But you know that's still it, that's not a bit you know that doesn't take all that long. But the views uh, is more. Yeah. Yes. And I'm using the user interface to the migrate module. You know, seventy-five percent of it failed. Is there a way of capturing what it's trying to do so I can see what's going on inside? That's an excellent question. Um, I don't know. Um, it, all this stuff is flying right. Yeah. What's going on here? Yeah, to, to sort of like pick up where it it, it leaves off. Yeah, um, that's right now what he's trying to do. If it's doing it nicely, it's going to be saving it as configuration. I've always just been looking at these as, as two separate things, but trying to use the UI to get yourself some of the way there and then. Um, doing the rest would be would be rather nice. Yes, um, yeah, I think um, I, so. Getting all that UI is very recent, so it it should be it should be creating configuration as it does that, and so you should be able to export the configuration. Yes. So, uh, one of the things I'm, I'm doing in this repository, yeah. uh, this is a, this repository here is uh, an open source Drupal 8 repository for the migration of a real site that I'm doing from 7 to 8. I decided to just make the, the Drupal 8 repository public. So, in order to configure the migrations, I use the brush uh, migrate upgrade command that have the dash dash configure only option so it configures the migration but it doesn't run the migration. And it produced all this configuration and I thought, I don't know if I trust any of this configuration. So like if you look if you look at this repository right now you'll see like the user role migration. I think might be the only migration that's running now. The I was running the tax and taxonomy migration and then that one broke. So I have a, a separate directory that has all the config that was produced, but because I haven't gone through and checked, like, wait, is the text 
format working? Is the you know person no type working? <coughs> and I have one directory that has the config of migration that's actually running, then all this other config that was produced, but I haven't really checked yet. So just one by one, I'm moving migrations in like the active directory so that they actually run, but I'm only moving them when, when I'm checking them and making sure that they actually work. Because I don't, I don't know, it'd be nice if like it all just worked. But I, I don't have an expectation that it's all going to just work. So I, I, I want to be deliberate about bringing it in. Um, I've got another repository, um, uh, migrate underscore Pantheon, that shows like from scratch the running of those commands, like um, just taking totally vanilla Drupal 7, Drupal 8 sites, installing those modules with Composer, and just walking through all the steps in a bash script so that people can see all the steps in progress. And like all it does is migrate a single node. So it, it doesn't confirm much, but it does show end to end how you go from vanilla Drupal 7 to vanilla Drupal 8, like doing a lot of the steps that, that have been shown here just in a, in a bash yeah. script. And so you know, so like uh, when you run, well, so when you run um, the, the drush command from the uh, library upgrade module, um, it produces. Um, configuration that you can then export with um, drush minus y cex, that's configuration export. Um, and then you can look at what it's doing. So that's, that's awesome. Steve, that was the neural mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, so it, like it's a half goal less than half built Drupal 8 site, but I yeah. just have the repo open as I'm working, so you can see it. We'll it use that. Now, let's see if I can find the spot where you said you, you know, stashed the configuration. Yeah, so site's default config has a config that's active, and then like site's default, I don't know what I called it, like unused it's migration. Default, okay. Like mm -hmm. site's default unused migration config, something like that. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, the migrate plus um, with the examples is your starting point, and if you're doing migration, um, definitely get that there. But yeah, start with, if you're going from six to seven, start with uh, core's update capabilities, and if it runs into trouble, export um, that configuration, and then you can move it into, um, ultimately, into a custom module so that it you know, can stay together with its code. Pretty awesome mapping of uh, permissions, uh, which is um, that, that Drupal understands. And if you feel like you got something wrong, or you decided that you just want to get rid of that permission entirely, uh, <laughs> you would you can make edits in the configuration file, and then. Um, you know, if you do it in the default configuration and, and where it's expected to live, um, it's imported with um, CIM. Um, but if you move the files into the uh, config slash install um, folder of your custom module, then you can just reinstall your module and get it there also. Is anyone looking to migrate from HTML, of an HTML a site that's like, you know, been around for a decade or so? Yeah. I, they have one coming up that, in one of the content type body fields, they are dumping a lot of HTML. Oh. 
<laughs> and I'm going to try to get that out and do something with it. Ouch. Uh, <laughs> it's PhD strip tags. <laughs> well, it, the, I mean, so, it would all be gone if I ran that. Yeah, so the, there's structure. The problem is, like, some of the structure of the content it's is consistent. actually it's, it's really consistent, consistent, but it's yeah, inside there. Tables, yeah. Just tables, yeah. tables, tables, tables. Yeah. 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 So I would actually say you would want to run something that exports all of that from SQL into flat HTML and then use um, something else. That, and, and I would actually highly recommend, um, if, if you're OK using Python and not having uh, parentheses after everything, um, <laughs> semicolons. semicolons after everything, <laughs> um, then now that's a sticking point. Uh, I don't know about that. Is it? It's it's uh, Python's beautiful soup, which will be able to take though that the your um, your HTML files and go for it. Yeah. Um, so it's you know. It's, it's Python and it's got its own packaging issues, so you use something else to install pip to install beautiful soup. But it's, it's worthwhile for what it lets you, lets you do. So if, if you're dealing with HTML structures, um, which there, there's these tools in PHP also, but um, you, it, this is something where we found doing a preprocessor and getting it all into structured XML, so the, the my actual migration is super straightforward, it's worthwhile. Um, and so um, well, that's an incredibly ugly one because we're dealing with some some really badly structured HTML. Um, but let's see if one of the parsers for something that's not incredibly ugly. All right, everything is incredibly ugly for this uh, project. Okay, yeah. So this one is is uh, a bit better. Um, so it's it's able to do the regular expression stuff really well. So it's like finding the bylines based on finding where it said posted by it. So here we were dealing with very inconsistent structure. If you have consistent structure, it's it's um, it's much easier. You can just like you know do it by tag or by class on the tag, and it understands all that kind of HTML stuff. So it's all it's a, you know you can just say find me the paragraph with the class byline. That'd be great. We didn't have that, so. Um, you know, we have a regular expression for posted by, um, and then, you know, any number of spaces, and then the on maps to the date format, and when you run through there, you say for um, byline in, and where it finds it, um, and that's where we, um, we bring everything off of, of that. So um, it's all regular expressions. And where the name is the first part of the match, hosted by parentheses, any number of things on such and such date. That's how we got the name. Um, then the created time from the time conversion. And then the body is the very next thing that we find. Um, and all of this, we are just dumping into uh, an XML file that we then use um, Drupal's 
XML importer to, to do it. More questions? You talked about the migrate plus module being a good spot for examples. Yes. Does that include examples that have things like, uh, well, gnarlier nodes and, and things like that? A, a reference to this that goes over here, uh, multiple, yeah, yeah. single and multiple you know, field values, that sort of thing? Um, so multiple field values work like really pretty easily. Um, yeah, it, that's still. You know, one row as far as bringing a piece of content. Um, references. Yeah, so references um, also covered still in the so so it's got a basic example which is all we looked at, and then it's got an advanced example. And for whatever reason, the basic examples use beer, and the advanced examples use wine. Um, so that's uh, yeah, worth uh, looking at. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, it's, it's my great example of advanced. And so I think the main things, I mean, they're adding a lot, but again, the, the multiple, like, as long as it's just one, you know, you import one thing and then that's referenced in another, that's handled in, in the, the basic examples. Um, this is getting from more sources, um, including um, from a REST API. So again, the configuration uh, is where it starts. And so just looking at a role, let's just display that. Yeah, so, so the, most of the advanced examples is, is getting from different sources. Um, and yeah, and, and, and it should add, and adding another, as, as you showed, the process uh, function. You mean from other days, or does that mean like um, other than the XML? Uh, other than SQL. So the ones it shows is JSON and XML. So all the base examples assume you're you're looking at a MySQL database, basically. Um, what if you need to get a from like access or something like that? Do you have anything to access? I don't. Um, and, you know, Drupal supports looking at that. So any database that Drupal supports, it should be pretty much equivalent because you're you're just querying it. Um, you know, you have you have all of Drupal's tools of, of talking to a database source. Um, so if there's a driver for Drupal to talk to the database, you should be good. And in general, leave it in the database. If you have something crazy like HTML in a field in a database that you need to parse. Um, you know, you can either write extensive PHP um, processors um, to do that um, for each row, which, you know, if it's a good structure, that might be all you need. Um, if it's not a good structure and you want to get into something that's better at turning a you know, bad HTML into something parsable, then you'll want to get into, into something like Python's Beautiful Soup. More questions? Please contact me when you're starting with any questions. Um, I have not done as many uh, migrations um, as I wanted to do in the um, most recent version of Drupal, but I'm going to be doing them soon. So I will um, look forward to um, helping out and answering questions and 
getting more stuff public and on, on in the documentation. So, um, yeah, the all the good stuff is going to be in this example um, module, but the, there's going to be um, yeah, covering more use cases um, increasingly. Uh, Drupal 8 and Migrate Core. Uh, Migrate Drupal 8 Core is uh, it's um, continuing being actively developed and is, is getting really good. So, yes? When you run the Migrate module, does it uh, get current and historical versions of the content? Getting in the revisions. Getting in the revisions? Yeah. It can, it can. Um, but I think, yeah, it, it. I think that'd be another, a separate migration. I don't. Yeah, I have to see what it's doing for existing Drupal sites. Mm -hmm. It may understand all that and just bring it in. Um, yeah. But for another source, you'd have to write an explicit oh, migration you? for revisions. Yeah, this is actually a Drupal site. Yeah. That has revisions and we maintain revision history because we're a policy site and yep. people sue the university. They want to know the version of the policy that was in effect on the date that they're suing about. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll get back to you on that. <laughs> and people sue you're going from the all the time. You're going from Drupal 7 to Drupal 6? Uh, Drupal 7. Drupal 7. My name is yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, right. Yes, that's rather important. For this offer. So yes, if you learn nothing else from this, then migration is not just for the birds, it's also for the turtles. Um, all right, well, we'll just go back to the beginning since the slide at the end of my contact information is missing. Oh, I almost didn't get frozen this